I felt like um, I didn't have enough in me to write a book. Not that the not the story. I'm talking about me, the ability. I was worried about how it was going to sound. But God spoke to me and said, don't worry about how it's going to sound. Just start writing. As I began to put the pen to the paper, God brought back to my remembrance a childhood a situation I was in. Lone Oak had its first tornado. We were all at school. And the principal told everybody to get in the hallway. All of a sudden, we having to uh, apply the things we had been having drills on. I don't know why that didn't register in my head, but instead of getting in the hallway, I jumped on my bicycle and headed home instead. By the time I got to, to my street to turn to go home, the wind and the rain was coming down. So it had got so heavy until when I went to turn, the wind picked my bicycle up and threw me in this ditch that was by the baseball diamond. So I, I, I left my bicycle in the ditch. I crawled out the ditch. I stood up to go back, go down to walk down the street and I, I couldn't go, it, I, I couldn't go. So what I had to do was drop down on my knees and go the opposite direction away from the wind. Still blowing, but I couldn't go straight into the wind. And I dropped on my knees and I crawled and I crawled all the way home. God used that. He brought it back to my memories. Cause when my mother died, it just felt like I just wasn't gonna make it. Seemed like I just couldn't take it. Seemed like it was just so dark, I couldn't see my way. I asked God, God, why did it seem like I couldn't take it when my mother died? It felt like I was gonna fold. And I said, but when my children died, God, it seemed like I took it better. The Lord spoke to me and he said, because when your mother died, you tried to go through the storm standing up. But when your children died, you dropped down yeah, on your knees. See, oh, hallelujah. And you went through the storm on your knees. See, it's a difference. Hmm? See, some things you can figure out, you work your way through, you, you get it to get it together. But when a storm comes, Where's God's kind of stuff? Hmm? My granddaughter, when she was small, she would go in my closet, get my shoes, put on my shoes and walk down the hall, clip clap. But them wasn't her shoes, that was my kind of stuff. Them shoes were too big for her. See what I mean by God kind of stuff? It's too big for me. It was too big for me. It, I couldn't wear God's shoes. These were God's shoes. It was only a pair of shoes that was beyond me that was going to fix this. I was in a car wreck in 1998. And in that car wreck, I lost my 8-year-old, my 10-year-old. My sister lost her 12-year-old, her 13-year-old. And we was on the way to bury my mother, who had 52 years old, had died with breast cancer. Stepfather was driving, and he eventually passed away. And they had to bury the four children and my mother together. My stepfather was buried later on. I had a broken femur, my pelvic bone broke, my back broke in two places, my shoulders, wrist, and my ribs. And they said, Miss Palmer, you may never walk again. But I told them, you all do all you can do, and God's gonna do the rest. This is when the Lord told me to write the book. This is amazing to me how God can take your life experiences to make you really see. My book ain't for the weak. It's not for the self-righteous. It's not for them whole people that ain't got no sickness. They got they self all the way together. The self-righteous and judgmental is not because I tell my real testimony. A lot of people can't take your real testimony. God is a God that forgives. In order to live your best life, you got to forgive. And God is a curse breaker. My name is Jocelyn Palmer, the author of My Storm, Destined for Greatness, Volume 1 and volume two. You'll never be the same and you'll say, if God did it for her, he can do it for me. Hello everybody, how y'all doing? My name is Evangelist Jocelyn Palmer. Y'all come on in here. I just decided to step in and just go live for a minute. Me and the mister, amen? Come on in, come on in. And when you come in, click like and click share that like button down at the bottom. Uh-huh, we're gonna wait a few minutes for them to come in before I just start. We're gonna wait just a second. I didn't, I didn't tell nobody I was going live. I just went back. Let me go ahead and uh, uh, hit somebody up and tell them that uh, 
Evangelist Jack Palmer going live. Amen. We want to let them know. Uh huh. Yes. How y'all doing out there? Amen. Good to see everybody. Been a while since I've been on, but just decided to stop to you all, stop through, and tell you all how good God is. Yeah, hey God, hallelujah. He's still a good God. He's still a mighty God. Let's just stop. Y'all stop and let's talk for just a minute. Give, let me, give me one more second to, because I didn't tell anybody I was going live. Me and my husband just decided to go ahead and drop in here. And usually when we drop in here like that, God got something to say. You hear me? Usually he'll have something to say. One more person. Amen. Because they'll be saying, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me? Amen. Come on in. Come on in. Say something in the comment section so I'll know who's there. Come on in the comment section so I'll know who's there. Huh? Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, here we go. Let's get started. Let's get started. Hello, everybody. My name is Evangelist Jacqueline Palmer, and you are watching the Mind Your Business platform. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, staying out your neighbor business, but I want to know, are you minding the business of God? Are you doing what God has called you to do? Amen. And we know that this is an hour to run, run, run as never before. Hey, Sister Ann, my friend, God bless you. Good to see you. Shy Black, I'm in the... She, Shy Black, that's my friend too. She said, I'm in this thing. After live, how y'all doing, Miss Jackie? Girl, God is good and he's good all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me see. Leola Sims. Oh, that's my that's our auntie right there. She done stopped in and hear what the Lord has to say. Amen. Y'all come on in here. Y'all hit that like button. Now, uh -huh. go ahead and share with a couple of people to let them know that I'm live. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to pray that this thing act right because it's just been acting wrong, but God is good. Sarah Hubbard, hey, I'm in the house. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I'm going to move in this house. God bless you, woman of God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I, 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 I got through doing the breaking live thing, uh, uh, the urgent uh, announcement that I gave. I decided to just go ahead and, and, and just go live to talk to uh, uh, talk. But I tell you, in the topic he dropped in my spirit, God don't need us. We need him. Amen. Hallelujah. We just going to talk for a little while because a lot of times you all, I'm going to go ahead and start thing off. We're going to let turn El Palmer loose a little bit too. A lot of, I, what, what I understand is, you know, a lot of times we go it, with all this stuff happening. We going along like, and God done gave us specific instructions to do this, to do that. But we, we, we dragging our feet in our mind. Do it like God need us. You understand? But we need him. And we're dragging our feet like, like we got, we, we think we got a lot more years and stuff. But you know, people are leaving here. And, and, and the thing is, we, we got more years behind us than we do got in front of us. So if, if Solomon said in his word, if, if you got something you want to do, you better get busy doing it because you can't do it from the grave. See, now is the time to walk in obedience. God help us to walk in complete obedience. I know life is tough. We have lost four people, three of them relatives, four people in the last two weeks. So I, I, I know whether it be cancer, whether it be a heart attack, whatever it is, they are leaving here. And these people are not old people. Hallelujah. But see, I'm not promised tomorrow. Oh, I'm not promised tomorrow. But I tell you what, glory, hallelujah. I, I'm trying with everything I got to try to tighten up the rope. And then you all, I want to talk to you about this here. I'm going to say something about this here. I, 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 um, uh, my A1C, anybody got anything to do with the nursing field? My A1C was 8.2 when I went to the doctor. I am overweight, you know, and, um, it's supposed to be six to six point five, and you all are coming out the doctor's office, and a friend of mine walked out. Somebody I grew up with. I'm not gonna call his name. 
but he had both his legs cut off. He had been a diabetic and didn't know it all these years. And, and that, that shook me. That did something to me. And then I, I came home. I prayed a prayer. And I said, Lord, see, we thank God. God got control over. I don't care what you, if it's, it's, if it's your appetite for food, if it's your appetite for sex. If it's your appetite for watching stuff, you ain't got no business. See, we all have appetites for something. But the thing is, God, he's a God that can heal anything. He can deliver you from anything. So I said, Lord, so I, I, for a week, I started, because I wasn't even taking my blood sugar, and I know better. But you all, what I did, I started taking my blood sugar for that week. I watched everything I put in my mouth. Glory, hallelujah. And how, how about how God is so good to me, you all. How about my blood sugar 104 or uh, 120s? It, it's, it's within normal range. And I, you know, and all I had to do was pay up. And then I, now I don't start exercising. Now I'm saying all this for a reason, you all. I didn't to all two hours was of exercise. You know when I was in so much pain, but I just I was still in the pain. But I kept on going anyway. But all I'm saying is, God will help you. He'll help you with anything that you're struggling with. I don't care how small it is to somebody else. I don't care what somebody else thinks. God is a deliverer. He's still a healer. But see, God has made you some promises, but you got to get up and do something yourself. You know God ain't going to make us do nothing. But see, what it was, I had to make up my mind. What I, I, This is what I want to get to right here. You all, I had to come to the end of myself. And see, I, I, when I came to the end of myself, I ain't eat no bread. I ain't eat no sweets. It takes something not to, to put that stuff aside. But I, because I love food. But honey, it, it, but I came to the end of myself. And when I came to the end of myself, see, that's what God wants you at. At the end of yourself. And see, when you come to the end of yourself, that's when God can step in and do what he do best. Because when you come to the end of yourself, you throw your hands up and you say, God, I can't do this no more. I can't do. You realize where your help come from. See, the problem is, a lot of in a lot of situations, I'm to be smoking, drinking, doing whatever you doing, uh huh, cursing, lying, cheating, whatever you doing, you haven't come to the end of yourself yet. See, when you come to the end of yourself, I'm talking about you in a place where you don't know which way to go, huh? You done got your hand out of it because you done kept on trying to do it yourself. You done kept on trying to fix the things yourself. You just keep on. You done made a mess over and over and over. You keep ended up back in the same place, but you got the come to your end of yourself and make up your mind. Here I am, God. See, I know, I know, I know, I know. Glory, hallelujah, you're hurting. I, I know you're going through. I know you're disappointed. You, I, I know all the stuff that's going on in life. You're so heavy and stuff. But see, while you trying to figure it out, God already worked it out. See, when I came to the end of myself in the situation, how about it didn't take God but one week? It didn't take him one week, but it took me one week to see the results of what God can do. Now, see, he's been telling me all the time what to do, but I'm ignoring what he's telling me to do and doing what I want to do. I'm uh, not resting in him and not trusting him, but I said, God, I want to live and not die. Hallelujah. Thank you. You got to make up your mind. God, I want to live and not die. Okay, I'm going to talk about your cigarette smokers. Uh-huh. Yeah, you saying you can't quit, you can't stop but when you get that call from the doctor saying that you got lung cancer, stage four lung cancer, ain't nothing we can do about it. Then you're going to come to the end of yourself. Uh huh. Then you're going to throw your hands up and say, God, I can't do this without you. But see, why not do it now? Hallelujah. you. He's a habit breaker. He's a yoke destroyer. He loves you. He see you where you at. Uh huh. Hallelujah. God got greater for his people. But see, he can't really use me like he wanted to use me because I'm not in the shape that I should be. But oh, I didn't got up, y'all. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I came to the end of 
got get out the way so God can have his way. So why don't you get out the way? He want to save those children. Uh -huh. He want to save that husband. He want to save that wife. He want to see, he want, he want to heal you up that lonely. He want to send you whoever's for you, but you got to get out his way. What I mean by that, I'm talking about those that are waiting on a husband. What I mean about get out his way, glory, hallelujah. You're going to have to let that hurt go. You're going to have to give. Now, so you got to give him that hurt. You got to give him that disappointment, what he or she did to you. You got to keep going to the Lord with it. You know, somebody say, I can't let it go. I heard somebody say this on the planet. I can't let it go. I can't get over it. But you can let go. You can, you know, but it's a God thing. You got to stay in God's face. When you hurt like that, you got to stay in God's face. I'm not talking about going there one time and let it go. You got to spend time in his face. God it hurt. God, it don't feel good. God, take it out. I bind the hurt. I bind the disappointment. I bind the pain. I lose your joy. I lose. These are the things you got to pray. And each time it hurts, you got to go. Keep on going to it. Keep on going to it. And I promise you there's going to come a day if you keep doing what I'm telling you to do where you're going to look back and wonder how I got over. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. You got to come to the end of yourself and realize, see, God God don't need us. And we well, we dragging our feet like God need us. Come on. We got to get up and move because God don't need us. We need him. You, we see the people leaving here. He'll, you, you'll be checked out of here and somebody else will be doing obeying God and doing what he told you to do. You better get busy because time is winding up. Time, time is winding up. It's, it's, it's almost over. It's almost over. Uh-huh. Every time you get up, you're a day closer to leaving here. Oh, God. But the thing is, all you got to do is say, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me, God. I'm sorry, God. I give up. I surrender, God. I need your help, God. I can't do this without you, God. Seem like I put it in your hand and all of a sudden I got it putting it back in my hand. I done messed up and got back in your way, God. But God, help me to stay out your way, God. You got the answer to all things. I don't care if it's got to do with your job. I don't care if it's got to do with the church. I don't care what it's got to do with. God is one size fit all, you all. He can fix anything. He's a killer and he's a deliverer. But see, God wants your whole heart. You can't have live this thing. Uh -huh. He wants your whole heart. See, we won't ask, we'll tell somebody to pray for us. Uh huh. Pray for me, but you don't want to give up nothing. You don't want to let go nothing. You want God to move for you, but you don't want to do nothing for Him. But you got to give up something to walk this walk. Uh, -huh. it's free, but you got to pay. Hallelujah, Jesus. But you know we want everybody to pray for us. See, I know this is a hard one tonight, but I'm doing it with love. I love you. I love you. See, we want everybody to pray for us when God wants you to talk to Him yourself. Everybody else can pray for you. But see, he wants some time with you, some intimate time with you, some honest time with you, to come clean time with you. See, when you come to the end of yourself, see, it's a different, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I can pray every day, but it's a different kind of prayer when trouble's in the way. It, it, it takes you to a different place. Your prayers on a whole nother level when trouble pushing you in your back. But God wants us to be persistent and consistent even when trouble ain't pushing us in our back. So when trouble do push us in our back, we'll be able to take it and we'll be able to make it. Huh? So regardless of what the doctor say, the lawyer say, your friends say, God got the final say so in anything. The first thing you do is say, I'm sorry, God, for doubting you, God. I'm sorry, God, for not trusting you, God. I'm sorry, God. I can't change yesterday, but here I am, God. I'm a vessel in your hand, God. I surrender. I let go. I'm getting out your way. God wants you. You got to come to your end of yourself. When you come to the end of yourself and realize there ain't nothing I can do this situation is too big for me. It's out of my hand. I promise you. And you step back and you say, God, you got this one. I promise you, it won't take him long. here to go a moving for you. He'll go to showing himself mighty, showing himself strong. Oh, he ain't brought you this far to leave you. I, 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 I know you feel alone. I know you feel forsaken sometimes. But God ain't forgot about you. He see you. He know what your tomorrow gonna bring. He saw you before you saw this day. He saw 
matter what you were going to do, how you were going to handle it, he saw you. Ah, oh, grace and mercy. I sure thank God for grace and mercy. I don't always get it right, but I, listen, I'm striving. I'm striving every day. I'm striving. See, the problem come in when we give up. Uh -huh, we want to throw in the towel. We say we can't take this. I, 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 I can't go no further. I want to kill myself. Come on. You can do this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We got to come to the end of ourselves and realize that who our help come from, who's the author and finisher of our faith. We got to see, we trying to do God's job. Why are we trying to do God's job? Huh? You know them shoes too big for you. Why are you trying to walk in a pair of shoes that you will never be able to fit? Huh? And do you done fix that thing? Hey, you know, you got some people that are not very uh, mechanically in inclined and, and they'll fix something and, you know, uh, and it's, it broke the next week. Uh huh. And then they'll go back and try to fix it again and it broke the next week. Uh huh. But see, the, I, my daddy told me about a story how he kept on going to God, you know, about he wanted him to fix this and, and, and say, you know, but he, he would go mess with it itself and, and it would just break and it break. And when he came to the end of himself, he said, God, I need your help. He said, when God fixed that thing, it never broke again. Why don't you let him fix it? It'll never break again. I, I don't care what nobody say. I praise God, a uh, uh, woman of God, Sister Addison, glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, God, he, he cares about us. He's still a healer. I know he's still a healer. I know he's still a deliverer. Uh-huh. But before it's over with, I'm going to show y'all a picture of what God did for me in 10 days. Huh? In 10 days. El Palm, I'm going to turn you loose. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Uh, God bless the Lord, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. You know, and I was thinking about even with what she's talking about. You all, one scripture says God has given us the power to death, hell, and the grave. You know, he's given us the power to deal with a lot of things. And many times we are, first of all, you got to have faith in your prayers. If you've honestly repented, the accuser is always there trying to tell you God doesn't hear you or it doesn't make a difference and your prayers don't really matter. And even if he doesn't say it, you feel it. It's called sometimes you're praying and you may not feel like your prayers is making a difference. But it's kind of like going out even to a certain degree planting seeds. Just because you don't see the results immediately doesn't mean that a change isn't happening. And I'm going to share this with you. You have to understand this, that if there is no death, then there can be no resurrection. You hear me? I want to say it. If there is no death, then there is, can be no resurrection. And many times what we have to do is get to the point where we die to self. See, God has given us the book. Many times we're going, and it's okay, go from minister, minister, preachers, and, and get a word from God. But there's still nothing like you getting in the word of God and getting the scripture for yourself. Because, see, even when we expound on the word, we expound out of our understanding and our experience. But it's kind of like they uh, use the analogy to taste in the fruit. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I can taste this fruit and you can look at me and it can look good and I can fall all over and it can be the worst thing ever. But until you take a bite of it for yourself. So understand this, even when you're praying, sometimes you just have to simply say, God, I believe the word. See, because we look for a feeling in order to add to our faith. But faith should actually come before a feeling. In the beginning, the Bible says, let there be, and there was. So the word was spoken before it came into fruition. But many times we want to make great to get, we get to the point where uh, we feel a certain way. But the word of God, you can stand on it regardless of how you feel. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you all, and, and, and just kind of listening to what she was saying. And what is the title? It's, you know, it says, let's talk. I'm going to tell you something. God has your best interest in mind. He really loves you. The enemy want to make you feel, you know, well, God, if you did this and that, you know, no, no bump all that. It, it just get, you are fearfully and you are excellently made. And sometimes you got to look in the mirror and talk to yourself. Huh? Lord, I am who you said that I am. Help me to believe because, and I'm going to share this with you. Many times people don't even see you the way you see you. Yeah, how many times has somebody come up and gave you a compliment and 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 you it's hard to receive that compliment 
because you don't feel like whatever it is. And and wow, look here, I'm going to read this for you. And I'm going to go ahead and she can do what she do or go the direction she want to go. But here it says, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Here it says, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. It's for the trumpet uh, shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now, this is talking about even as of the resurrection, but the Bible tells us to be a living sacrifice. So we have to die daily, die to our emotions, die to hopelessness, die to fear, die to worry, die to unforgiveness, die to frustration. You, you, you got what I'm saying? And so you have the power and God gives you the power. And see, the beautiful thing and one of the things I love, I'm going to give you this analogy and I'm going to let it go uh, years ago, because uh, the thing about if you go back and you read through the Bible, there he was a, was a man that wanted uh, a, a relative that he has delivered or healed. And uh, God told, you know, let him know if you can believe all things are possible to them that believe. And he came back and he said, God, I believe, I believe, help that my unbelief. Sometimes you just need to simply pray, Lord, help me to believe. I know your word is real. You know, I know, I know it's real. It's not about what I see. Sometimes you may have to close your eyes. Have you ever, uh, you know, I think about they do roller coasters. Sometimes they have to close their eyes because think about this. And I'm going to share this with you. Uh, if you look out, if you was outside and your eyes was closed, there could be a bear in the front of your yard, but you wouldn't have any fear because you couldn't see it. Now, I'm not saying that you close your eyes and be blind to situations and circumstances, but when it comes to God's word, you've got to believe God's word more than you believe your circumstances. See, I, I, I'm going to tell you see, this. The, you, this is your reality that you're looking at, but the word of God is designed to change your reality into this is what you're dealing with. So you may be dealing with this in your body, but he said, by his stripes, I'm healed. And if you have faith in that word that in reality, this may be what's going on. Huh? But the word of God is true to the point that it can change my reality. Uh, reality is that gravity, you throw something up, gravity pulls something down. But now if you go get in an airplane and you got some power in that airplane, then that do that takes you to another level of understanding. So it doesn't stop gravity from being what it is, but because you're in a different vehicle, you can defy the laws of gravity. So now you got the law of gravity, which works, but now you got an airplane. So now you got a higher law than the law of gravity. You, you see what I'm saying? So see, gravity can hold you, but when you got that power and you can walk in that power, you have gravity, I know what you said. Huh, but I got wings. I know what you said, but I got a jet pack that you can't hold me here. You, you see what I'm saying? So this is what the word of God is designed to do. It's designed to take you to another level of faith than where you are presently. But you've got to believe it. Uh, I'm get, I was I told you I was going to give it an example of, 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 of faith. And, and Lord, I believe, help them, I unbelieve. Years ago, my favorite candy bar was a Snicker. And at the time, this was when I was very young. And my dad took me to a store. And the Snickers at this particular time was about 23 cents or 25 cents. And I remember this so vividly, walking up and putting my little candy bar on the counter. And the person behind it uh, uh, told me how much it was. But with taxes, it was more than what I had. And so when they told me, I was aware that it was more than I had. So I understood that I didn't have what I need to pay what I wanted. I didn't have the power to pay for what I wanted. You see what I'm saying? And, and we have to know that, man, God, God, all God expects you to do is to give your best, give you all that you have. And so what happened is my father walked up behind me in that very moment. And he said, boy, how much you got? So I told dad how much I had. And he said, give the lady what you got and I'll take care of the rest. So I walked out there with the thing that my heart desired. You see what I'm saying? So now it, the Bible says, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more does God know how to give good gifts to his? But see, many times God is just waiting for us to give what we've got. Because all of it is beyond us anyway. 
Huh? The Bible says every good and perfect thing comes from above. So it's not even about my strength. It's not about my ability because my ability will fail me. I love the fact that he prayed for Peter. And he said, I have prayed for you that your faith fail you not. Right after that, Peter went and messed up, slipped, denied him and all these other things. But there was still something deep inside of Peter. And he told me, he said, when you are strengthened, strengthen your brothers. So it may look like everything is tumbling down. You may be in a slip. You may be my wife put something on you, weevil, but wobble or whatever the case may be. You may be in a bump your head and everything else. But you, if you can stop for a minute and look deep down within the very recesses of your soul, if you are still here, then God still has a blessing for you. Huh? If he was through with you, you'd have already been gone. Huh? So, but since you, if you woke up this morning, the Bible lets us know every day is a brand new grace and a brand new mercy. If you are still here, then God still has a work for you to do. And the enemy wants to keep you from getting to it. And don't worry about what you got because what you got is not going to get it anyway. The only thing that's going to get it is what God is backing up. And if you got God as your backup, you're going to make it. That's my two and two. Amen, amen. Oh man, of God, I, I sent a uh, uh, Pastor Spencer a email. I want him on it, but listen, you all, God don't need us. We need Him, and we gotta stop living like you know He needs me. He gonna wait on me. No, time moving on, and then you don't want to miss your timing on the things that God got for you. You know, we can lag and drag our feet so until we'll miss it. Uh huh. We'll miss out on what God has for us. And we don't want to do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And then I was thinking, I'm going to touch on this and, and I'm going to show you all something. But uh, uh, the weebling wobbling, I, God had gave me that. You, you may weeble, you may wobble, but you're not going to fall down. And the Bible says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. See, and and, and and I know life can throw you some changes. I, I know it can throw you some stuff that'll take your breath away. And, you know, I know it'll throw you some stuff and make you go down on your knees. I know life can throw you some stuff. But the thing is, life can throw me some stuff. But no matter what it has thrown me, I may have went down on my knees, but I still had my hand in God's hand. You hear what I'm saying? And the reason why I made my, some stuff will make your knees bugger. The reason why I made my knees buck up because see while I was down there, I had my hand in his hand, but for just for a minute, I was looking up at my circumstances. It wasn't looking up at God, but I still had my hand in his hand. Now I was weebling and I was wobbling, but it took God to tell me if you keep your mind stayed on me, I'll keep you in perfect peace. My hand still in his hand, but it took him to stir to me to make help me to get my eyes off of circumstances because see I got my hand in hand but I had my own my circumstances so it was making me weeble wobble and drop them but I didn't fall down so what I did was you know when I come to myself realize that I where my help come from realize who was in control I got my eyes stopped looking at my circumstances turned around and looked at God and I kept my eyes on him before I know it I was sturdy the situation still was what it was but I was sturdy I wasn't weebling no more. I wasn't wobbling no more. This is a faith while we walk by faith and not by sight. Glory, hallelujah. I, all of a sudden, the word had begun to come alive to me again. Yes, I was hurting. Yes, I was still going through, but I was weebling while, but God stirred at me and got my mind stayed on him. You know, the double mind that was gone. I had clarity of thought that God is who he says, and he's bigger than any circumstances that we have to go through. Oh, he know what you and he he's not a high priest that he can't be touched by your infirmities. He know whatever your struggle is. I don't care if you're shame about it, embarrassed about it. God know whatever your struggle is. He know where you at even when you don't know where you at. Yeah, you know, have you ever been something wrong with you? You say, man, I don't know what's wrong with me. I can't figure out what's wrong with me. Why I'm like this? Why I say I can't, I don't know what it is, God. I try to let this go, but God, what is it? God knows. And he's the one that has to reveal stuff to us. 
It says, where our help come from? Je Sister, Sister Janice said, God bless you. Sister Ann said, that's right, because he is revealing so much to us. Time is not standing still. It's not. You better get busy. Uh, uh, Sister Leo Sims said, amen. Sister uh, uh, First Lady Hubbard said, yield to God's will and his way. We got to. We got to. Time is winding up. It, it ain't no time, y'all. Whatever the dreams are. Whatever the purposes are, whatever God has called you to do, you got to get out the way so he can do, bring you to that place. Because see, the thing is, even with the, the promises God that made you, because you're not in walking in obedience, because you're not doing what he's told you to do, if he was to bless you like he told you he was going to bless you, you wouldn't be able to take it or make it. So he can't do it. Because you're not in position. We got to get in position and stay in position. Huh? Now the hour where we got to stay on our post. We got to stay on the wall. You're going to have husband, wife, children, friends, enemy, all try to get you to come down off that wall. Uh -huh, try to keep you from fasting, kind of keep you from praying, kind of keep you from seeking his faith. Uh -huh. And see, the devil will keep us, we'll get up and more. He'll keep us in bed all day long, get nothing done that the Lord that told us to do. Hallelujah. But if you get up and you seek his face, see, yeah, I whoop myself with this one. Come on. You get up and you seek his face. You understand what I'm saying? God going to do what he tell you going to do. He, gonna, he got something for you to do. But we got to move. Where I help. Uh, hallelujah. I want to show you all something God did for me in 10 days. Those of you all that wasn't on, on here, I have been going to the doctor. See, what y'all didn't know, I've been sick in my body. I ain't been telling my business. I ain't been talking. I've been so sick in my body till I couldn't even holler. I, I was having trouble getting around. Uh-huh. You know, my health was steady getting worse. My back and stuff was hurting so bad. My knees was hurting so bad. In pain, just going, struggling in my body. And some of it's from the car wreck that I was in, you know. So I had started gaining even more weight and stuff. And my blood sugar, oh, you know, I'm making excuses for the stuff that I'm doing. But when I saw my friend and his legs were cut off, oh, grandma had a new bag. You understand? You know, he said, Papa had a new bag. Grandma got a new bag. I said, become a husband. Already almost pushing me around. I don't really want them to push me around. So I got to get myself all the way together. And I cried out to God and God heard me. I want to show y'all what God did for me in 10 days. Huh? When you come to the end of yourself and get out God's way, He'll show you how to do some stuff. You see that? That's the difference in me in 10 days. Do you see the difference, you all? God did that. God did. It's a God thing. So what you think you can't let go, what you think you can't give up, the stuff you crying and you fretting about, I mean, wasting time, years and years of fretting about stuff that you can't do. These children, can't nobody get to you like these children, these grandchildren, the way they think, the way they feel. I know. Whew. But we got to stay on our post for them, if nothing else. We got to stay on our post. Our children are in trouble. So, it's so many of them that just don't even believe in God. Believe there is a God. There's so many people failing him. I'm putting it in a nice way. There's so many people failing him. There's so many people being uncovered. Everything, the stuff coming to the light. The people don't have no faith in the men and women of God. But because that man and woman of God fell God, because they didn't do right, it don't take nothing away from God. See, that's what people got to understand. They looking at the man and the woman, but you got to get your mind on God. Now, if he fail you, huh? then come talk to him. See, I know sometimes we feel like we failed. He failed me. He, he, you know, he let you down. You know, I, I could have felt that way when I lost my children. You understand? It's some hurting stuff to come through. And we don't understand. And the per and, and somebody said, you shouldn't ask God why. Who else am I going to ask? He the only one got the answer. But the thing is, some hurts come to no matter what answer he gives you, it's not going to be enough. So you might as well gird up the lungs of your mind 
Get your mind on God and just hold to it. And you're going to see the change that's going to come. I would have never dreamed that I would have peace again. I would have never dreamed that I would have joy again. I would have never dreamed that I could take what I took when I took it. You understand what I'm saying? Huh? I, I would have never dreamed that. But I serve a God that show himself mighty and strong, show me. I found out who he really was when trouble was in my bed. Huh? Like I say, when you're in trouble, your prayer life goes to a whole nother level. Why not just go to that level? Anyway, God see your hurt. He see your disappointment. He see where you ain't, you, you ain't necessarily out the fight. But you done sit down in that corner trying to catch your breath for too long. Because you can't look past the hurts and disappointments. Because you can't get over what he or she did. You sitting in the corner, you can't get that seem to get that second wind hurt from the church and the in the church. Uh, I, you got to understand, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but a spiritual wickedness and principalities in high places. And the Bible says, let the wheat and the tear grow together. So they're going to be in there. So, but you got to do what you're supposed to do to get in a place where you'll know how to answer whoever it is. Well, you can you can go to a way. See, God trying to take you somewhere. You pray for them, He's trying to take you somewhere. And the devil, you whoever he got to use to keep you from going and getting the things God got for you. He'll slow you down. He'll progress. See, we the, the devil got one of the biggest tricks. He's making a, he making us weary and well doing. Because we so overwhelmed with the things that are happening. Because this stuff happening is unreal. Some of it, we, we thought we literally living the end times in the Bible. See, it used to be we would read about it, but it wasn't happening. Now when you read the Bible, you read it and it's happening. It's, it's happening around you. And we're not living in the end times. I don't know when it's coming. Because we're living there. We're there. But you are El Palmer, listen, if you got something else to say, man of God, you go ahead and say it. Because listen, I love you guys. I, I love you guys. And I just stopped through. And we're going to come on here. I'm going to start trying to get back to coming every week, whether this thing works or not. We just gonna, we're going to give it a shot anyway. That's what we're going to do. Because see, it's part of my mission. It's part of what we're supposed to be doing. I have had calls from people saying, where are you all? Where are you all? I'm here. Hallelujah. Uh, Sister Sarah Hubbard, uh, 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 First Lady Hubbard said, let's go. Let God. It's all in his timing. Keep the faith and stay focused on God. Amen, woman of God. Sister Janice said, amen. Sister Ann said, yes, I appreciate y'all stopping through. Oh, God, I tell you, I feel good in my sanctified. So it feels good to obey God. It feels good. So I can go to bed and get some sleep tonight without getting a whooping. Hallelujah. Come on, baby. <laughs> you all, I'm going to share this with you. Um, God has no respect to person. And sometimes, look here, turn those devices off. If you got to stand up and just sp get spend some time with God. It is not hard. Serving God is not hard. And you cannot line up without God's help anyway. You know, and to surrender, you know, sometimes we will make such a big this and a, but such a big hoo-ha and different things of that nature. When all God wants us to do is just give him another yes, yeah, yeah. you know, and, 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 and yes is not based on your ability. Yes is giving God permission. One scripture says, I stand at the door and knock. God knows you can't do it without him. He knows you can't make it without him. He knows that you don't have the strength without him. God knows. You know, and so, but one of the things he does, he requires us to just, you all, you, you, we spend so much time and you all, this is not a criticism. This is an observation. I, how much time do we actually spend in God's face versus how much time we spend on our phones, you know, playing these little games, you know, and just different things. And, and I play them sometimes too, but though you, a whole hour being you know, passed by you just flipping hitting the little button, click, 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 click. And all of a sudden you get a phone call and it almost take you out. But if you had spent that last hour talking to God, Lord, here I am. 
Lord, I'm nothing without you. Lord, you created me. You know me better than I know myself. God, feel me from my head to my toes. God, I know you got it in control. God, I thank you. You woke me up so you could bless me. I don't know what the enemy is going to send, but God, I know you've already given me what I need to stand. Because you see, you let nothing come up on me that you would not uh, provide a means of escape. You let nothing come up on me that I cannot bear. But you've got to be, you've got to be there where you get that power to stand. See, many times we make it through and we will say, I don't look like what I've been through. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes what you look at like on the inside is not a true testament of what's tore up on the out inside. Sometimes what you look like on the outside is not a true testament of what's tore up on the inside. People get buried every day looking good, had that makeup on from head to toe, but inside they're rotting corpse. Y'all got what I'm saying? And so that's a beautiful testimony. I don't look like what dead folks don't look like what they've been through either, but they still just as dead. That's my two and two. I'm sorry. I love you. <laughs> Hey man, so we 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 didn't want to stay on here long. We just wanted to stop by, and and just I I just decided to stop by and just give what God gave you all. I, I know I mentioned the young man that is missing. Uh, again, share to go out and share that other video. Uh, his name is uh Williams. He's uh you all know don't know his mother, Frederica. So uh, please. Go share video um, because of somebody that had told them something. They're not looking every day, and they're looking like they're not, you know, because he's a dialysis patient. So y'all pray for him. Uh, he said, uh, "Sister, uh, First Lady Hubbard said you're speaking the truth, man of God. You helping us tonight. Prioritizing, prioritize your time wisely. Amen." Amen. I, I'm, I'm getting better. You all, I, I'm talking. See, the reason why I know what I'm talking about because I struggle with what I, I ain't. I'm not talking about nothing I haven't struggled with or struggle, but the, but He the same God. So I'm talking to y'all what I know and not what I heard, mm -hmm. what I've been through. I'm talking about where I've been at. Uh huh. I'm doing what I'm. I know. Ooh, I know. Hey, come on, man of God, pray us out. You see, call a few names and stuff, y'all. Uh, go ahead. Oh, well, you talking to me or you talking to someone else? There ain't nobody me and you. Oh, okay. I wanted to share this, though. You know, <laughs> I wanted to share this. You all, we work, for you all that work, you all work all week, but you get a paycheck at the end of the week. Imagine what the paycheck would be at the end of the week if you prayed like you worked. Huh? And I'm talking about spiritually. If you literally, cause you you be tired, but you're going to that job anyway. You fight past sleep. You fight past attitude. The person that you wanted to whoop, you didn't whoop them because you knew you were gonna lose that job and you needed that money. Y'all got what I'm saying? So if you can see that job as a need, how much more do you think you need God? And how much more? Man, look at here. There's nothing like peace of mind. And the beautiful thing about God is this. It can be storming outside. Everybody can be acting cross-eyed and crazy. They can run through the building and say it's a bum in the building. Huh? But if you know what you know, you say, well, you, 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 and I'm not saying if they say it, don't go be wise, move swiftly, or whatever the case may be. But you still can keep your head in the middle of the battle. Uh, the Bible says a fool uttereth all his mind. If something moves you to the point where you just start going here. One thing, you're not trusting God. But the Bible says a fool uttereth all his mind. It basically is panic. Huh? It's basically panic. Yeah, so, but the, the scriptures are there to help us. But anyway, back, I, I'm sorry, she's missing to get off and I'm not going to bore your oh, patience. Oh, yeah, I mean, if you got something to say, say it. I'm not going to bore your I, patience. I, I but man, that. we don't realize how much God loves us. Man. And, and 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 I pray this prayer. I said, God, help me to love me the way you love me. Yeah. Has any of you ever prayed that prayer? I'm not talking about being arrogant, conceited, self-centered. But God, God loves me so much that he died for me. 
So pray the prayer. Lord, help me to love me the way you love me. You all, you all don't know. You you have no idea how powerful that statement is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have no idea. Lord, help me to love me the way you love me. It'll make you do right. It'll make you do right. Man, look. And not only say it, but believe he can. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our problem is we don't even have faith in our own prayers. Come on. That's why we call 15 dozen folks, because we don't feel as if our prayers work. Yeah. But God says, I have no respect of person. Mm -hmm. And yes, one chase a thousand, two put 10,000 to flight. I get it. But after you, part of the work that goes along with your prayer is the faith. The Bible says faith without works is dead. Now let me let me let me let me do this. What about faith that doesn't work? Wouldn't you consider that dead? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. I'm just sharing. Mm -hmm. I ain't trying to fuss at nobody, but we have to, it, it's not as complicated as we make it. It's better to have one scripture from God that works than to have a thousand scriptures you can quote and have no power. Jesus fasted 40 days. Moses fasted 40 days. Moses came off the mountain glowing. Jesus came out and walked on the water. Now we said we done fasted three, four, five days or whatever, but what kind of power did you come out in? What happened when you stepped out? And this is not a criticism. It's an observation because we oftentimes talk about a relationship. If it's not working, you need to check your relationship. Y'all got what I'm saying? Have faith in your prayers. But anyway, she said pray, so I'm going to go ahead and pray. Well, hold, Look, on. hold on. Uh, uh, before you start praying, you finish talking? No, you good. You're 110, babe. You know, you, you throw that stuff out there. I want to say something, too. Amen. I, I just saw Pastor Allen Hill come in. He said, help us tonight, bro, from a teaching. Good, uh, for teaching good, it does feel good to obey God. It does. Amen. Sister, uh, my friend, uh, Nicole Jackson, a uh, powerful prayer. True. Uh, Sister Ann said, amen. Uh, Pastor Allen said, that's what I need to do fast for 40 days. Come on. And come, uh, uh, Sister, uh, First Lady Hubbard said, come on. You made it plain. Amen. Amen. Cause see, when trouble hit, we are, before we even come to the end, the whole thing is, before we even come to the end of ourselves, and when we finally come to the end of the self, when you come to the end of yourself and realize ain't nothing you can do, you'll you'll just give up, give in, and that's when God can do His best work. But we don't call everybody like He said. We'll call everybody. We don't. We don't. We not try to fix it. We don't. We don't did this. We don't did that. But we come to the point where that situation staring us in the face that there's nothing I can do about it. God, if you don't fix it, it can't be fixed. And a lot of situations, I'm going to say this, a lot of situation and turmoil that we're going on in our lives, some of it is because that we are not in position that God wants us to be in. We're not in obedience. So if you're not in obedience, in, in obedience, you don't have the power to even cure a headache because you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Huh? You you ain't praying, you ain't fasting, you're fussing, you're cussing, you're doing everything. Huh? When God done called you to do better than that. You understand? It's a purpose. But time is winding up, you all. God don't need us. We need him. Amen? Because he'll let you, he'll go on and take you home. And get somebody else to do the job that he told you to do. God, I don't want no rocks crying out in my place. Help me to obey God. Uh, Sister Jack, well, it's true anyhow. <laughs> so, y'all, we not fussing. We just, this is just what God gave. God, each other did. God said, he don't need us. We need him. Amen. El Palm, I guess that's all I got to say. You know, I thought about this, you all, and my <laughs> wife was, I was discussing this earlier. Lord, I don't want a fire have to be behind me in order for me to run. And you are, you, look here, I'm going to share this with you. You don't have to wait until you broke before you become broken. 
It, it doesn't have to be like that. Many times, if we have to, if it has to be like that with us, it's our fault because of something we won't let go, something we won't give up, something we won't surrender. You do not have to. Now, don't get me wrong. If you end up in the hog pen like the prodigal son, God will bring you out. If that's what it takes for you to come to yourself, more power to you. <laughs> But you don't, you know, and I've been in situations, man, where I had to do just as like uh, Miss Palmer said, you know, got to the point where, you know, before I could finally just look at I and say, God, look, I don't care. Whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've been there, you know, on more than one occasion on the edge of feeling like you're about to lose your mind. Sometimes the pain can come through so tough until you can't breathe. Mm -hmm. You can't sleep. You lay down at night and you just pray, Lord, Lord, I just want to sleep. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have the strength to fight. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what I want you all to do is this. <laughs> oh, you go ahead. Go ahead. Then, I was just saying, when you at that place where you don't got, you don't have, feel like you ain't got the strength, you ain't got the word. Mm -hmm. uh, when it feel like ain't nothing working, just say, help me. Just say, help me, Lord. I, I've been to that play while, like Just I said. Say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. And then I heard the Lord say, you're going to be all right, even though I feel like I wasn't going to be all right. All I could say was, help me. Help I was hurting me. so bad. And I and, and I said, Lord, what am I going to do with this hurt? He said, you're going to give it to me. Huh? You're going to give it to me. And guess what? It took me a minute to just, because I kept trying to take it back. <laughs> but it took me a minute to finally let go and give it to me. And he did something for me, y'all. I feel peace again. I feel joy again. Oh, he's so good. He's so. And y'all, I want to say this. I'm, I'm gonna say this here right quick. And we go. Oh, we got to go. Uh, Ellen Palmer and I've been married right at thirty years, and it has not always been easy. But I want you to know each obstacle that we came came to, and God gave us the strength. To overcome one thing in a relationship, you got to forgive. If you can't forgive a person, you're gonna have a miserable marriage. If 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 you keep bringing up, you got to let God heal you, and the other person got to be willing to go after God and let God heal them. Hmm? And you got to strive to do better. You got to be able to hear Him, respect what He feels. You got to be able to hear her. Respect what she feels, you know. Um, you can't change yesterday, but you, I, I'm telling you, it hadn't always been easy. But each time we come over something, I love him even more. I, I, I get closer, you know. I look at it, it's been 30 years, and there's still time I catch him looking at me, goo goo eyed. He catch me looking at him, goo goo eyed. And he, I said, what's going on? What's wrong? He said, nothing. I'm just looking at you, thinking about how much I love you. Uh, I said, go on, talk that talk, mama. Talk that talk, mama. I'm just telling you, it's work. It's work. Marriage is work. And it's for grown folk. Woo! It's for grown folk. Amen? I'm going to leave it off. So we're going to say, you finna pray for the people. El mm -hmm. Palm, Sister Sarah said, it's tight, but it's right. Go ahead, man of God. You all write this down. Love is not about getting everything right, but it's about having somebody to love you through the stuff you get wrong. Say it again. And the, I said, love is not about getting everything right. It's about having somebody to love you through the things you get wrong. And mm -hmm. nobody can love you through the things you get wrong like God. Mm -hmm. so Amen. Amen. You just when you just when you get up, don't make excuses for it. Uh, okay, blah, whatever, and move on. Yeah. But love is not about getting everything right. It's about having the ability to work through the stuff you get wrong. Yeah. You know, and 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 both people can. It it, it is what it is. Amen. Hello. Amen. You know, that's not. It, look, it is what it is. But anyway, what I want you all to do today, since you all, whatever it is that you've got before God. You may be praying for a loved one. You may be praying for something in your body. You be praying. I don't know what it is you're praying for, but everybody has a situation and everybody has an issue. Huh? Mm -hmm. But the only problems we have are the ones we haven't learned how to give to God. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go ahead and pray. Are we good? Miss Palm? Yeah, I right. really like it. 
good. We're good. All right, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Name God, we come to you as honestly and as humbly as we as, know how. Yes, we God. know that you're a miracle working God. We know yes. that you're soul saving God. Lord, we receive healing in our hearts. We receive yes, deliverance in our souls. Spirit of the living God, we don't always know how to pray like we ought to. Ah, mm -hmm. but you're the one, you're the one, you're the one, you're the one that can reach those places that seem unreachable. Mm -hmm. So we ask that you move from heart to heart, from mind to mind, from soul to soul, man to woman, boy to girl, from situation to situation and from circumstance to circumstance. Yes. In your name and by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, yes. God, we're touching and agreeing and we decree it to be so. In Jesus' name, as always, our answer is amen and amen. God bless you all. Thanks for tuning in. Keep us in your prayers too. And we Amen. will all do the same for you. Amen. Amen. God bless.